Today is the feast of Our Lady of Sorrows, so the Blessed Virgin Mary and her sorrows. Uh, today there's an option of gospel readings, and I chose to focus on the reading from St. Luke regarding the prophecy of Simeon. Notice how Simeon says, This child is destined for the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul too. So the sign that will be opposed, in other words, Christ who will be opposed, and everything that he stands for. And then it goes on to say, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed. And basically what that's saying is, you cannot respond indifferently to our Lord and the message of salvation. Either you accept the message of salvation, or you reject it. Now some people say, well, I just don't know, I'm a, you know, I'm not an atheist, but I'm an agnostic, so I just, I just don't know if God exists, I'm kind of open. But you see, if you don't make the effort to search and find the answers, then basically you're already choosing, you're already rejecting Christ, you're already rejecting belief in God. So we cannot remain indifferent. We have to choose, and notice that it says it's not just a, a, an inner choice, but it's something that will be revealed. In other words, we have to manifest our faith. We have to manifest what we believe. Now, of course, this prophecy of Simeon, it mentions that in regards to our lady, that a sword will pierce your own soul too. In some translations, that a sword will pierce your heart. You know, imagine our heart being pierced by Painful that would be, and our heart is the, 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 the most key element of our physical existence because it pumps blood to every part of our body. So, it's something if our heart was wounded, it would affect every part of our body. So, when it comes to the sorrows of Our Lady, this passage or this occasion when Simeon makes this prophecy, this is one of the sorrows of Our Lady. So, in other words, this revelation that her son is going to be like this, and that a sword, sword will pierce her own soul also, implying that it's going to pierce the heart or the soul of, of your son also, it caused Our Lady great sorrow, great grief. And traditionally, people meditated both on the life of Our Lord and the life of Our Lady, somewhat to the life of, of St. Saint, Saint Joseph also. And they meditated on her sorrows. And there are many sorrows of Our Lady, but traditionally there's seven of them. And, uh, I'll just name them all. So the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, the three days loss, um, meeting our Lord on the way to the cross, standing at the foot of the cross, taking the body of our Lord down from the cross, and laying him in the sepulchre or in the tomb. So Our Lady was involved in all of these, and all of these caused her sorrow. I mean, we could add to this, you know, imagine when Our Lord begins His public ministry. That would have been a great sorrow for Our Lady also, to be parted from, from her Divine Son. And also the death of St. Joseph would also be a, a great sorrow for Our Lady. Now why is it that we meditate on the sorrows of Our Lady? Why is it that we meditate on the sorrows and sufferings of Our Lord on the cross? Because when we meditate on, on the suffering of our Lord, it manifests the extent of, extent of His love, but it also manifests to us what our sins do. In other words, our Lord's sorrows are caused by our sins. And in many ways, because our Lady was essential in the plan of our, of our salvation, even her sufferings, we could say, are caused by our sins. But the other sort of beneficial reason for us to meditate on the sorrows of our Lady is because all of us experience sorrows of one sort or another at some point in our lives. We lose a love. We, we are afflicted with some sort of suffering or illness um, or some debilitating condition. Or we lose a job and we have trouble uh, making ends meet. So many sorrows in life. And by drawing close to our baby and meditating upon her sorrows, it helps to put our sorrows in perspective. So yes, we all suffer, some people suffer more 
intensely than others, uh, to a greater degree than others, but we need to look to the sufferings of Our Lady and Our Lord, and their attitude towards their sufferings gives us an example of how we need to approach our sufferings. So, you know, Our Lady didn't rebel against her sufferings, Our Lord didn't rebel against His sufferings. Yes, He prayed, Father, if it be possible that this cup pass me by, but not as I will, but as you will, which is how we too should pray in the midst of our own sufferings or our own crosses. So they give us an example, but it's also noteworthy that because they suffered, um, they can relate to our sufferings. And not only that, we draw close to our lady because she's our spiritual mother. And she loves us more than we love ourselves. Mary loves us more than our own earthly mothers love us. And as you know, especially those of you who are women, the love of a mother for her child or for her children is an extremely great love. And for many mothers to see their child suffering is far worse than if they themselves were suffering the same things or, or even greater things. So the love of a mother is extremely great. Now, of course, the love of Mary is, is very, very great because she has this immaculate heart, she has this pure heart with which to be capable of loving Jesus, but also so that she's capable of loving each and every one of us as if we were her children, her actual children. So when we understand this, it's, it's like, wow, we have we have a great source of consolation in our name. Now, now it's true that God's love for us is far greater than our days, but we can relate to a mother's love. And God wants us to be able to relate. And it's when we relate to that motherly love of Mary and draw close to her that we can be enabled to draw closer to God and to entrust ourselves to God in the way that we would, that a little child would entrust himself to the loving arms of his mother when he is so when he is injured, when he is hurt, or when he is afraid. You know, on Wednesdays we have the devotion to Mother, to our Mary, Mother of Perpetual Help, and you know, there's that image, it's an icon, and there's the image of the Christ child in the arms of Mary, but one of his sandals is falling off. And there, in the corners there is two angels, and they're holding the instruments of torture that will be used when Christ is crucified. And so the story behind this, this image is that when Christ was a child, he was reminded of his crucifixion, which of course he, he knew was coming, but fearing the pain and the suffering that he would have to undergo, he jumped into the arms of his blessed mother for consolation and comfort, and in doing so, one of his slippers was falling off or, or fell off. So that's, that's the message behind that, that image. And it's the attitude that we ought to have. Whenever we are filled with sorrows, whenever we are filled with tribulations or trials, we should jump into the arms of Mary and allow her to embrace us. We need to be like little children. And of course, we need to entrust ourselves to God also, which Mary did perfectly. So she was perfectly obedient to God, even to the extent of accepting all of these sufferings in her life. So let us, let us um, you know, ask God to help us to deal with the sufferings that we have to face, the sorrows that our lives bring us. But let us seek our consolation in the arms of the Blessed Virgin Mary and in the heart of God.